<laughs> it's like a natural instinct. I don't know. <laughs> How did you do that? You didn't even say anything. Everyone have a good ham fest so far? Oh, yeah. 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 Did y'all think there were more people here than were last year? Oh, yeah. 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 I think so. More booths. More tables. They told me that they had to turn down vendors and booths yep. because they didn't have enough space to oh, contract wow. it, and they want to contract that big building next time. Maybe. I don't know. But, yeah. Huh? Oh, well. Oops. I did. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but, you didn't sign an NDA, right? I did not. There you go. They didn't tell me who it was. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so thank you for uh, joining us this morning. We got, we're missing some people, but I don't know where they are. I think everyone's still alive after last Mike, night. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I, I saw Mike this morning. I saw two or three other people who are not here. So, yeah, good uh, So good, uh, good morning, good Sunday morning. And uh, we're going to – This in the past, what we've done with this is we've tr traditionally made it like a Q&A type thing. Uh, we do have a couple questions we're going to ask you guys, and then uh, we'll go from there. But. I want to introduce everybody, but I want to do it quicker than we did last year. It took way too long last year. Uh, the first person I want to introduce is Bill, Ham Radio Tectonics, who just walked in the door late. Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome, Bill. And Tim, Tim is Gray Man Poda right there next to him. Tim. I'm just picking on you, Bill, because he just walked in. I know. Yeah. We're on, we're on rock star time. Yeah. Oh, well, okay, there you go. All right. Try again. So I'm going to start down here. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Want to know anything about Raspberry Pi or APRS? He's the guy to talk to. Linux. Linux, yep. Mm -hmm. It's Chuck, KK6USY. Chuck. Every antenna that's ever been commercially manufactured, he's built himself and probably done a better job with it. Yep. So Robert, W5ITR, Digital Rancher on YouTube. Oh. He does a lot with satellites. He's got some really cool satellite tracking videos. I'll ch check that out. Uh, James, K-E, K-E, tell me again. I forgot. I, actually, I was gonna, I was gonna act like I forgot, and then I did forget. So K-E, K-E, Papa Zulu November. Papa Zulu November. He does a little bit with Parks on the Air. Just a little bit. I know who he is. Josh M Radio Crash Course, uh, K-I-6-N-A-Z. He's in California. We don't hold that against him. <laughs> he started. He started a YouTube channel recently. Y'all go check it out. Yeah, that's, that's a new channel, right? It's, it's just, just like us. Uh, Frank, and this is the Frank real reason Radio. I didn't want to pass the mic. Frank, Frank <laughs> <laughs> Radio. Uh, Carlos of K nine O L. You got a new call sign. I, was, I got yeah. it right. K nine O L. Yeah. Uh, life at terminal velocity, parachute mobile, if you've never worked him, when he's falling out of an airplane, it's an experience. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Freddie Mac, um, KD5 FMU. Yes. Oh, I got it right. Yeah. KD5 <laughs> FMU, Oklahoma. Ham Radio Crusader on YouTube. Uh, oh, K I can't say it like you can't do it. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk over here. <laughs> no, I was say your <laughs> K5YV1. <laughs> Everybody should experience that at least once in their life. Uh, Steve KO4AFL. Got a new channel out there. What was your last video, Joe Brett? Uh, Hamshack Hoarder. Yeah. That's right, yeah. That was very so, emotional video. Apparently, it was a very, it was very, yeah, very it was emotional tough. video. It was tough to watch. And hiding in the front row. Gaston the Tech Prepper, if you guys haven't met him yet. He doesn't do a lot of ham fest, so definitely say hi to this guy before you leave. And then on the front row, we got Lou and Pink from uh, Hammond, Hammond and Hyken YouTube oh, channel right here. Hyken and Hammond. <laughs> they should be Hammond first, man. Come on. <laughs> and then brand new right here, you two stand up. I'm going to put you on the spot. Ham Radio Duo right here. They have a brand new YouTube channel. And they do CW on POTA. So that's an experience to watch right there. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being here. Yep. So did I miss anybody? I don't think I did. There's, there's Bryce. And Bryce, hey. Backpacking booking. Backpack. Okay, I'm not familiar with that one. I must admit it. <laughs> so I do a little bit. It's about ham radio, but I do rock retreat, motorcycles. Uh, oh, nice. Stuff. Okay. What's the channel name? Backpacking bookie. Backpacking bookie. Yeah, B-O-K-Y. B-O-K-Y. Okay, okay. okay. Cool, I'll look that up. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Did I miss anybody else? I'll throw a 
line out uh, Whiskey 4 Echo Echo Yankee. Okay. Channel name. Okay. Amateur radio licensing. For licensing. Okay. Hey, awesome. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. What's your channel? Ham Radio Unleashed. KK4 PAO. That's right. KK4 PAO. Ham Radio Unleashed. That's right. Cool. Thanks for being here, guys. So, all right. So, what is. I'm sorry? Ham Shack TV. Oh, I didn't see you sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. Ham Shack TV. Tell me your name again. Josh. Josh. Josh at Ham Shack. Because we don't have enough Joshes, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, we have plenty of Jasons. We only had one Josh. Is anyone named Frank? Someone needs to be named Frank. No. Yes. I have that. He's in California right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, Josh, uh, Ham Radio TV, right? Ham Shack TV. Ham, Ham Shack TV. Thanks for being here. Go ahead. Two hundred and fifty pounds of Yezu? Yeah, That's not a niche channel at all. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever make an Elecraft video. Never. My video content aims towards going to different ham fests and focusing on parts on here. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Okay. Well, thanks for being here. Appreciate that. So I've got two or three new channels I got to go check out myself. So here's the question. We want to know what is the best thing you either saw or picked up at the Ham Fest this weekend. And if you guys have questions for anyone specifically, we kind of took too long with this last year. That's why I didn't pass the mic around That's yet. why it's two hours this year. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I kind of feel like it was only an hour and a half last year, but the amount of information exchange was not as much as it should have been. No, it, was a lot. it just took too long to get everything out. So. Yeah, but we want to know what the best thing you found at the Ham Fest is, or the best thing you maybe saw and haven't, haven't got yet. And uh, if you have a question for anyone specifically up here, feel free to do that too. Is so, a wireless mic? I, no, this is the only microphone. If you'd like to come up here and talk to the mic, you're welcome to do that. Um, or I can repeat the question, or whoever you want to direct the question to can repeat the question. I didn't see it. No. It's, it's funny too. that every hand we've I go to, we're electronics guys, right? Yeah, <laughs> we always struggle with the AV stuff. <laughs> exactly. I go into forums at uh, ham fests, and when they can't get the microphone to work, I'm like, "Oh, those must be CW guys up there." Reading the microphone to your mouth. Every person on my live stream does that. <laughs> right here, yeah. it starts out interesting. <laughs> it starts with yeah. So, all right, uh, gentlemen in the red hat, you had a question. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, they had that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I asked that question. So the Explorer Carbon Fiber Mast has sold out yeah. like four times this weekend, yeah. and apparently they they have they had a huge stockpile of them at the store, and when they would sell out here, they would transport more from the store. I was last told this probably this number is probably not accurate anymore that they had they were bringing forty more over from the store this morning. So if you haven't got one, I was at the store yesterday when I got mine, and that was about nine thirty. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, the Poda Twenty Mass. That's a really good mass. Um, most of us up here have it. And yeah. Good. That's a that's a good purchase there. The shelf at the store was empty this morning. They restocked. There was three left for ninth grade. Wow. Okay. Wow. They he said they were they were filling online orders as well as ham fest orders. So they're trying to do everything in actual chronological order, which is good. So. 490 pre-orders that they were shipping out this week. Wow. Yeah, they wanted yeah. that all fulfilled, boxed, and ready to go before they put anything out. <laughs> That's crazy. Buy. It was a popular mask, in case you haven't yeah. figured it out yeah. yet. So, good. Uh, anybody else? What else you find at the Ham Fest this weekend? Yeah. I was going to say, Ed. we got a hold of the 3D printed SMA wrenches. I just bought two of those. Yes. It's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, you yeah. get one of those. It's like, I just picked up one. It's like, it's, it's golden. I'm yeah. sure that's like, you know, it's going to be one of the popular ones. Yeah, back in second row. Yeah, back in second row. Yeah, yeah. He's got a bunch of 3D printed stuff out there. Ron? And by the way, right behind that gentleman is a fellow who's printing uh, 3D cases for an infant out. It's a QRP infant half wave. He has sold really out. Beautiful uh, uh, 3D sold out. work. Looks really good. And uh, I'll put one together to see, uh, see how it works. You got one. Okay, so they're, they're saying it's sold out now. Is that right? Yeah. 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 I got mine <laughs> okay. I, I bought the last one, the one he had on the table that's already put together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cheap. That's 
Well, of course, you don't know how to put them together. <laughs> well, okay. What else? What else was? Uh, or any questions for anybody up here? This is kind of like an open forum, so anything at all. Yes, sir. I was telling Ray, I picked up. So I go to Dayton every year. Mm -hmm. Dayton is like my ninth year that I've gone. So I got an eight-hour drive there. So out in the flight market, I'm not sure if there's anybody here that's uh, into the old military radios. So uh, when you're out there in the flight market, you've got those military guys, right? And they're all used to those six-meter military radios. I never knew there was any HF ones out there. Well, yesterday I'm walking across the flea market area and I happened to see one of those PRC radios. It was the 1099 Alpha. And I'm looking at it and I saw this upper north sideband. And so I had some questions about it. And the guy called me the radio and the, the owner of the radio from over and he said it was an, H an HF. And it was a 10 for 80. Hmm. And he says uh, he was in the military. The military gave it to him. They sent the paperwork, said it's yours. You can have it. You don't have to send it back to us. And, you know, he, he gave me a little history on it. He says they're, they're, they're a very rare model. They're, they're very hard to come by. Mm -hmm. on an HF military radio like that. Nice, yeah. There's a guy at one of the local ham fest in Texas that brings out some like really cherry looking Harrison Motorola radios sometimes. And there's, I always like to get the, the history behind them and see where they came from. So, good deal. Anybody else? Yes, sir. I only found a working uh, tube tester. A working tube uh, tester. Uh, That's good. They, they said, oh yeah, it works fine. There's no way to test this like here, at least you can test it. Yeah, yeah. They gave me a tube to test with it and everything. It's the sensitivity, you need to boost it just a hair, but I mean, the thing's probably older than I am, so it's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I can live with that. Yeah. So but that's okay. I'm a guitar player, I have uh, audio tubes, and uh, I don't think it'll test any of the transmit tubes, but it will test all the other tubes in my Keith Kid radio and stuff like that. So it's, that's a win. For me, that's a win. Yeah, I totally. Nobody around here, yeah, you can't go around and test them anymore. It's some little hardware or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't, I was a kid, just go there with your tubes, and they had the boxes to buy, so. Uh, <laughs> That's a good find then. Yeah. Good, thank you. Tell everybody what you found. Come up, well, get, come up here, come up here, and, 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 and bring it with you, because, <laughs> yeah, this, did you pack it away already? <laughs> no, it's just okay. sitting right here in the All bag. Right. Anybody else have something real quick? Everybody's, everybody's looking at it now. <laughs> that was perfect timing on that. Has anyone heard of a Yezu FT90? How many how many watts do you think that is? Fifty. Fifty on VHF. Yes. And UHF is thirty-five. <laughs> Took it over the test table, tested this morning. It works just fine. What my usage for this is going to be in a small ammo can with a six and a half hour battery I got and use it when I do POTA so I can do 520 out there instead of having a five watt HD. It gives me more ways to make contacts while I'm doing POTA. And this was one of the things I was definitely looking for was a small 50 watt radio to do that. And I found this out there on one of the used tables out there. Check it out and work right. It's definitely small. <laughs> How much? I'm not telling y'all. Yeah. I, <laughs> I bought this for twenty dollars. Oh. <laughs> deal, deal of the show. Yeah. 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 Deal of the show. Yeah. 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 Right there. Deal of the show. No doubt. No doubt. Sorry. Yeah. I can't say that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> nothing got damaged. Almost. Uh, nothing that matters got damaged. And uh, I, I did all my due diligence, and no, I don't need to file any paperwork with the FAA. But uh, there was a bit of a mishap yesterday. Um, I went to the drop zone to do a parachute mobile jump. And uh, if you know me and know my channel, that's what I do. I jump out of airplanes, play radio. Um, and um, as I was leaving the airplane, my radio bag decided to go for a solo skydive. Oh, <laughs> no. Without a parachute. Without a parachute. <laughs> and, um, well. How high were you? 14,000 feet. Oh, geez. <laughs> So, now keep in mind that I, I did a visual inspection on this stuff. I really didn't think about it until I was talking to Josh yesterday and last night. And he says, have you played with the radio since? And I said, that looks fine. <laughs> this is what you, so, this is an ID50, an Icom ID50. Thanks for, thanks for the lending hand there. Uh, it's tethered still to the bag. So, you just see, you see. Look, you go ahead and let go. Okay, so f for those of you that question whether this is you know, gonna fall out, well, only if the bag leaves me, which has. <laughs> so now we get to find out. Somebody have a, an HT handy? Oh, you haven't tried this yet? Haven't tried it yet? Well, let's see what it is. All right, right. Yeah, so, so, probably one, yeah. No, 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 Yep, uh, I'm on one four six five two. So turn down your volume a bit so that you don't, you know, backfeed everybody if it actually transmits. So let's see. K9 and a little testing. Wow. Fourteen thousand feet. So I can say that an AD50 is uh, impact rated for fourteen thousand feet. I can say that. I don't know that I can say that because I, you know, you know, legal legal stuff or whatnot, but. Uh, it survived a 14,000 foot drop. Uh, so how did you find it? Say again? Uh, yeah, I, I, well, I talked to him about it and I told him that it, that it looks fine. Well, we just found out that it works. Um, how did I find it? Well, let's see. It uh, In the bag was the radio. Uh, I have a radio sport headset, an altimeter, my GPS logger and tracker, uh, my phone, and uh, my Mishtastic node. So I need to pull the logs on my Mishtastic node and see if I can do the math to figure out how fast it went for terminal velocity on it. <laughs> uh, and basically I turned on find, find My on my phone and started looking for it. Uh, it. It showed it on the edge of a roof in a neighborhood a couple of miles away. I went knocking, there's nobody home made some other you know, arrangements, and they eventually came home, went to the backyard looking for it, not finding it. And I'm like, I know it says it's here. Look at the roof, nothing. Look at the gutter, it rolled into the gutter. Oh, wow. So I took, uh, I went back to my car, got my, uh, my, my Explorer, the cure is that Explorer mask, there you go, Giga Parts, the shoe plug. <laughs> and uh, one extended the thing. Jabbed it through one of the loops in uh, in the bag, pulled it down, and I just looked at it and went, everything looks fine, and everything did look fine. Um, my, my phone is damaged, the back of it is shattered, but I already have a replacement coming. I don't know if you can see that from over there, but uh, the, the back is made out of glass, and well, glass breaks. <laughs> who, who is it? Jerry, uh, Jerry Riggs at all? Does, is oh, that, Jerry Riggs at all? Yeah, yeah. is that what he says? Glass, 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 bro, bro, glass breaks, something like that? Yeah. yeah. But, y yes, sir. Phone calls, none. <laughs> now, I, I take my cell phone with me for the event that if I land off, if for some reason I am landing some other place in the drop zone, I can call the drop zone and go, hey, I'm fine. I'm over here. Can you send somebody to get me? And then in the unlikely event that I am not fine, I can also call 911 myself and take care of the problem and you know, get, get ahead of it. It's handy. Um, right there, right there. Yes, sir. What was the homeowner's reaction? They couldn't make heads or tails out of it. They were like, uh, you did what? <laughs> you, you have a bag when you free fall? I'm like, yeah, yeah. That, I didn't want to get into the YouTube channel thing of it. And uh, uh, basically, I tried giving them my information in case they find any damage on their roof. And they were like, 
the, 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 the lady of, of the couple just looked at me and said, it's okay, hon. Go on. <laughs> like, no, man, here's, here's my information. Heart. Bless your heart. She, no, she didn't say bless your heart, but she had that tone in her voice. It's like, we know you're a little, you know, a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> yeah, she's a special one. Any other questions over that? Oh, on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, year, next year, you should throw out the bag and see if you can catch it on the way down. Absolutely not. <laughs> you see, that would actually get me in hot water with the FAA because I'm not allowed to throw things out on purpose. If it's an accident and it didn't damage anything, I don't have to file any paperwork. We know your, tra your transceiver transmits. Well, let's find out. Someone, uh, someone call, uh, call on 5-2. On yep, there's uh, the double there, but I, I heard uh, Richard oh, Dillon. So, there you go. It receives also. It works. There you go. Go tell Ray and Icon. Yeah. Definitely. Give him my footage and go, here's your next commercial, buddy. Does the APRS speak? It doesn't have any PRS on it. There you go. Wow. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> just, just, oof, just, oof, why don't you? <laughs> yeah, DPRS, so. Dealer, dealer. Yeah, yes. Real quick, real quick question. Say, have you signed a deal with Ray Novak yet that you're going to be a quality tester for all the HT? You know, that sounds like a good deal. Uh, can I get a, can I get a rep, uh, like a, like an agent or something like that to do that for me? Because uh, I'm not going to that stuff. <laughs> I want you. I want to see you fly the 9700. <laughs> You're gonna be waiting a long time. <laughs> I'll loan you mine. <laughs> oh well, okay. There you go. You heard it. He's gonna let me head fly his 9700, even though I just dropped it at 9750. <laughs> well, what's your average speed in free fall? In free fall, uh, 120 miles an hour. What's your top speed in a tandem? <laughs> I'll ask the question. We did 189, didn't we? 189. Uh, Steve did a tandem with me last year, and uh, we, we broke the sound barrier. <laughs> the holistic coefficient of the human body. <laughs> All right. Good. Yeah. Any, other, any other questions about that? If you've never worked him on Parachute Mobile, it's actually quite fun. And he'll, he'll give you a QSL card and parachute oh, and everything. If, if, if we made a contact on Friday... I have QSL cards with me. Okay. He's got QSL cards if you've contacted him this weekend, Friday. So, any other questions? How, any? how do people find out when you're jumping and, and frequencies and stuff that you're using? So, uh, that's, a good, uh, that's a good question. Repeat the question. So, the question is, how do people find out when I'm jumping and what frequency and whatnot? So, the first place it gets posted is on my Patreon page. Uh, those folks help me out by paying for the jumps, so they get first dibs on information. Uh, after that, uh, once I have some time, I'll post on the Toads Discord, on the K5YBY Discord, uh, on HRCC's uh, Discord. Uh, where else do I post? Do I post on your Discord? I don't remember. I, I, don't, I don't think I have a channel on your Discord to post on, but I might just post it on spe regular. We can yeah. fix that problem. We can, I can probably put it on regular spots, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, then after that, I'll put it on the HRCC Facebook group. Um, so if you're not in the HRCC Facebook group, you should be because there's a lot of really good people there, and uh, that's another another way you can find out. Um, depending on if I'm flying uh, uh, a radio with HF, and uh, and if I'm flying a Pac-10 at that time, I'll also post on the Pac-10 uh, groups that I owe. Like I don't want to post there when I'm not flying a, a Pac-10 because it just seems wrong to be using their forum to talk about you know something else. But if I'm flying a Pac-10, I'll also post there. Um, the Pac-10 uh, Infit Halfway uh, Mini uh, cut for 20 meters is my go-to 20 meter antenna. Uh, when I'm doing 40, I'm using Jason's kit. Uh, uh, let's see, and I have a couple of other Infits that I use, but you know, that, that's how I get posted. Thanks, Tim. You make a post on YouTube? You know, I haven't been making any, any real posting on YouTube. I might have to do that. Just a blog, blog. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's the question back there, yeah. What can the average cost be for, uh, you know, the, the, the gear, the parachute, the cost of the airplane, the fuel? Uh, that's, uh, well, an airplane is going to be about $2 million. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know exactly what you're asking, but how about this? My, my skydiving parachute system complete 
Uh, if I had to buy it brand new right now, I'm looking at close to nine grand. Um, uh, license is three and a half grand. Uh, now, once you have your license, you have your license, right? Uh, I just the way I see it is, I'm, this is cheaper than golf long term. And I sucked. At, I sucked at golf. I don't suck at this. I'm pretty decent at this. What's the per hour per jump cost? So without circuit, say you go. So, so when I'm when I'm doing a solo jump, when I'm doing one of these jumps. Uh, the jump ticket uh, here in Skydive, Alabama is $35, uh, and then uh, if I pay a packer, I'm paying $15 to have my parachute packed. Uh, if, I, if not, I'm packing it myself. But on average, you're looking at uh, $35 for the jump slot, and then if you're paying a packer, another 15 or so. Uh, and whatever gear you take with you, that might survive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You just mentioned that the better than long-term golf, but I'll tell you what, at 75, I'll be playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll be skydiving. If I'm alive, I'll be skydiving without a question. It is uh, it is the most ridiculously awesome drug that is legal. And, oh my God, you get out of that plane, it's just like, oh, feed me. Just <laughs> mainline it. And now you're trying to get more people to do it. Well, hell yes. Yeah. Exactly. Same way that we should be with ham radio, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, let's, yeah. let's encourage. Let's encourage all, all the hobbies. You know, let's all Absolutely. have some fun out there. Absolutely. Uh, well, Mike decided to join us. Bro. Hey, everybody! Hey, Mike. <laughs> Does he have a channel? Uh, he has a channel. He renamed it recently. I don't remember what his name is now. <laughs> I think he renamed it Life at Terminal Velocity, didn't he? Oh, Life at Terminal Velocity. That's, that's, that's what yeah, he named yeah, it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Mike is ham radio too. I want some, can somebody lay down some flowers for me as I walk? Yeah. <laughs> just, just pretend they're there. <laughs> you know, I, I I would throw something down, but I think I'd get arrested for a decent exposure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just taking Q and A. Anybody else, else have anything that cool ham fest related or questions for anybody up here? And does anybody up here have a story you want to share? Anybody? Bueller. Bueller. These guys in front of cameras and they can't stop talking. Yes, sir. Oh, here. Okay, I'll go. Um, first off, as a newly licensed operator, I've only been licensed since May. Got my tech and my general back in May. And to be honest with you, it's in a, a great part thanks to you guys. Um, so I want to make a comment first that the content that you produce, we all love it. I mean, I know I do. I've watched every single one, every, probably every video all of you guys have done. So it's an extreme value, I think, to the ham community, certainly to me. But the question I have, and anybody could answer it, or all of you could, is the pressure, there's got to be a lot of pressure when you have a channel. It, you know, Josh got a huge follow, all of you guys have these huge followers. That's a lot of pressure because you got to get that content right. You got to keep coming up with new ideas. Is there a balance in maintaining the YouTube channel? And at the same time, your passion for radio. Hmm. You can go first. <laughs> no, I don't want to go first. Oh. <laughs> you can go first. Is there a slack or no, it's tape. Oh, I well, see. Okay. Mike might be on. Hold on. It's taped down. It's taped down. Yeah, of course. You can uh, sit here if you want. Yeah, no, I think I'm not okay. So, pressure? Yes, of course, right? Because YouTube, I mean, let's just be real. I think everybody understands how the algorithm works. If you go watching uh, sourdough starter videos for a week, you're gonna see a lot of sourdough starter videos, right? So there is a YouTube game that you're playing whether or not you're playing it, right? Just by posting videos, you usually try and create a tempo. That's what puts videos in front of people. Um, if you can stick to a schedule, posting at least once a week, that kind of thing. So yeah, just the pressure of the routine, right? Sure. Um, <coughs> But then the best way to handle that is just to have a routine. Once you can build, at least for me, once you have consistency, then I'm usually, I can kind of get in the slot and just keep working it. That's why, you know, Saturday live streams, the after chat, right? I try and post a video by Tuesday sometimes. Also Thursday, Wednesdays, Ham Nation, <coughs> right? So it's a somewhat of an attempt to get to a schedule. And I think you, you mentioned um, video ideas. Boy, we got a really good hobby for video ideas. I don't know if you knew this about our hobby, but it is incredibly deep. And I can make a video about just saying, hey, I kind of want to learn more about this. Oftentimes, that's what my live streams are, is where I don't really know enough about a thing. 
And so I'm like, I'm gonna make a live stream next Saturday or the Saturday after that about this. So that'll give me enough time to start looking in, into it, right? And then sometimes we'll just kind of go into the live stream not fully up to speed. And the chat room's great because it's like, hey, you you big idiot, you're doing it wrong. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, the chat will tell you. Boy, they'll uh, let you know. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, and if you're okay with that, it's it's great because you, you come up to speed real quick when you're live. Um, but no, it, it just, there's, a, there's so many ideas. There's so many things you can make videos on. I have a list on my phone of just video ideas that I don't know that I'll get to by the end of next year on, on things. It's just, there's always something. Who wants the next one? Thoughts? I think that was a great answer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, congrats on getting your license too. Yeah, yeah man, totally that. congrats on that. I, I feel like it is, I feel like it, there's pressure, like what Josh said is correct, but it, for me, I feel like it's not, I'm not really pressured because I enjoy it so much. If, it, if I was doing a channel about auto mechanics, which I, I enjoy auto mechanics, but I don't do it very often, I would feel a big pressure to, well, I gotta go break something today so I can fix it or something like that. <laughs> but with ham radio, it's just like, I just enjoy doing it so much that I don't feel that there's a pressure to do it. I do feel that the timing pressure, I think is what Josh was describing. Yes, yeah. I do, yeah, the timing pressure, yes, absolutely. But because once you, <laughs> I did, um, uh, so K6UDA, if you guys ever watch him, he's, he, he took like three or six months off of YouTube and then came back and he was surprised that his numbers were way lower than they were. And I'm like, you just, you just got to stay consistent with it. Mm -hmm. So you got to post, uh, and I, I, I tell people that the, uh, the top three things for making a YouTube, I, I got three pieces of advice for making a YouTube channel. And the first one is to post a new video every week. And the second one is to post a new video every week. And the third one is to post a new freaking video every week and do that for about a year and a half and watch and see what happens because it does work. Consistency is the best thing you can do at all. But I've get, I, got to, I got to the point where I found myself doing more ham radio because of YouTube. Because I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm learning new stuff and people come into the comments or the chats or something and say, have you ever tried this? Have you ever done this? Have you ever looked at this radio, this antenna, this thing? And I'm like, no, I've never even heard of that. I'll go look it up. I'm like, whoa, wow, that'd be a neat thing to do. So now I gotta go learn something new. So I am learning more because of my audience. Just like people come up to me today and they're like, oh, I learned so much because of you. I'm like, I'm just regurgitating what someone else taught me is all I'm doing. All of the classes on my channel is done by a local club and I just put a camera in front of them. But people thank me all the time for the <laughs> classes. And they do a, they do an excellent job. So the local club does, does an excellent job. But I just I'm just sharing information, but I, I feel like a lot of times I learn more than I teach because I'm just having to learn all the new stuff that is, like Josh said, in a very deep hobby of ours. So, anybody? Anybody else? That was a good question. Yes, sir. Good just wondering what tools y'all use, uh, video editing tools, what other <laughs> sources you, is it for pricing, or do you want to share that, or just what you, what you use to help put together your show? So yeah. So anybody anybody who wants the mic can have it. So I use yeah yeah yeah. This is gonna take a while. Um, I use I started out with a piece of editing software called Cyberlink Power Director, which is what um, Dave Casper uses. Actually. It's been around for a long time. They do updates to it all the time. It's 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 a very unknown but very well working piece of software. And then I got Adobe Premiere a while back and I started using Adobe Premiere and, uh, and now I don't even do my own editing anymore, so I don't care. But, uh, but there's that and then, and then there's the, the recording software on the computer is called OBS and I think most of us probably use OBS and to, to OBS or StreamYard, but I use OBS to like record, record and stream both. So that's, that's the, my three primary pieces of kit that I have. Um, I use DaVinci Resolve. It's free, and a lot of uh, studios do use it for editing movies, and that's why I chose it. Plus, it's free. Um, <laughs> um, just raise your hand. Who else uses Resolve here? Who uses Resolve Studio? <laughs> oh, in studio. I was going to call you down in a second. Just get DaVinci Resolve. It's the best. Yeah. Um, then, like Jason said, OBS and um, 
your camera, just your phone on your camera. That that is like one of I've recorded everything here this week um, on my phone, and it's a Pixel Five. And no one can tell, other than the lights are blown out, and I'm getting annoyed with that. <laughs> um, but uh, anyone else? Any other software? I'll try to be fast. Yeah. Um, because I get asked, uh, Windows live stream is what I, so Windows when I'm doing live stream is OBS. Uh, I added on a Mac so it's Final Cut Pro, but um, God, I think I totally forgot what I was gonna say. So um, as far as cameras go, so I started out on YouTube with a uh, flip, remember the flip cams? Mm, wow. 2006, that's what I started with. And so now the fact that you have that in your pocket is insane. <laughs> So actually having good cameras through the early aughts or late aughts were, was really, really tough. And so having done this for a while, your phone is really, really good. So just use that. Go ahead, Joe. Still. Go ahead. It doesn't go far. So this is all relative. <laughs> and you say, no, nobody watch your channel. Yeah, well, of the people that do, so this is relative. <laughs> you just heard Frank say, if you want to do videos, use your phone. And you've heard Mike say it a hundred times. And I'll go one step further. Some of the my w most watched videos, again relative, were edited on iMovie on the phone. So the the software that's on the iPhone and the iPhone camera is what I used, and it did as good a job as uh, Premiere Pro on my Mac. Can I make a comment? Yeah. No. Come on up. I'm, I'll you be behind. It's fine. Stand up. So <clears throat> I think it also depends on the content that you're making. So like making a video here and this kind of atmosphere it doesn't take much of a camera but for me when I do like motorcycle videos it takes a very different type of camera to set that up and have it be stable so for those instances like a GoPro or something like that is perfect so I think it also depends on what your goal is and I think that's a fair point to make yeah, mm -hmm. yep. yeah that's true well, one thing I'd, I'd like to throw in and I think this is something you guys probably all agree on it seems like the more work you put into the video the worse it performs <laughs> the least amount of work you put into it it, it performs better, and I think it just it's more raw. It's more what we're used to seeing. We don't want the production and the fluff per se. You need to have good videos, and you need to have a good structure. But uh, audio is the key. Video is secondary. And um, and like I said, I, I find my best performing videos are ones that I I'm like God. I don't think I did a very good job. And and it's I think it's just the simplicity of it that that helps out. Yep. Yeah, question. Uh, another good program, too, if you guys haven't heard of this CapCut. Uh, Cap, oh, yeah? CapCut's free, but uh, I pay for the Pro Edition, which is like $10 a month, so I do a lot of my editing on that. I have, I I know people who use CapCut, and I've looked at it. I've never actually used it myself, but I've, I've, I'm told it does good things, yeah. It's not a bad program. I've been using it for about six months. So, so yes, sir. I just wanted to mention... Um, for a classroom training that we do for the licensing classes, uh, we're in a studio, and we mentioned DaVinci Resolve. I just want to give a shout out to Blackmagic Design uh, that has their ATEM series of uh, video switchers. Um, I come from a broadcasting background years ago, broadcast engineering, and to, to build a broadcast plant with synchronization of cameras and things like that was hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And here now you can buy from Blackmagic Design for uh, for their extreme ISO, uh, a, a video switcher with eight inputs, uh, with uh, synchronizers on all inputs, uh, special effects, chroma key, uh, digital video effects. Um, so if you're thinking about doing a multi-camera setup and whatnot, uh, take a look at the Blackmagic Design uh, switching folks. They're the same people that do the DaVinci Resolve editing. Mm -hmm. okay. Good deal. Any other, anybody else questions? Comments? Hey. Okay, here's Mark. What's up, buddy? Come on up here. What's up? Hey. You're in trouble. Yeah. We have an audio visual problem. Everything that we are allowed to do, seriously, like like I'm not joking, everything everything we're allowed to do, everything that uh, that we do, we get to do at this hand fest is because of this gentleman right here and his support. So you guys thank you. Thank you, Jason. These guys, I had to pop in and say hello to the ones I didn't see Thursday up on my, on my center. 
I heard a little bit about a party last night and another one the night before. <laughs> you guys are doing great things for Ham Radio. And I don't want to steal your thunder. Thank you for being here. The praise coming. <laughs> no, seriously, thank you guys for all you do to promote and encourage and educate in Ham Radio. That's all I want to share. All right. Thanks. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. It sounded like you had like a like a cockroach in there or something. <laughs> what was that? That's a message. Well, I know that, but what like was it a message you were getting? Yeah. Okay. Message. <laughs> we had a question. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I've uh, got the uh, HOA constraints where I live. Oh. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No one else does. But I've had half legs. I'm running between trees. It's about. Uh, you know, 40, 50 feet between them. Yep. It's got an awning, and it's got uh, aluminum slats holding it up. And if my antenna is like five feet or six feet above it, mm -hmm. should I ground that thing or just leave it floating? Does it make any difference in my radiation? Chuck, what do you think? Where's the transformer? Probably. The transformer is at the far end away from that. Are you making contacts? Yes, I am. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. I mean, if you're making contacts, do you have a do you have a high noise floor? Yeah. You do have a high noise floor. Okay, and it's not grounded. I don't know that the ground um, affect that necessarily. I, it, it can. It, it, it can. Transformer? Does it have? Are you running a radio? No. Kind of it's just an antenna. Yeah. You, you How, should take the ground and just ground it to ground. Okay, it's just my right antenna. Wherever you can. Yeah. When you say so ground, a an actual ground, and run, you can run a counterpoise also. Now, that would help a little. So the, the safety aspect, right, is you get hit by lightning, right? You want to be able to short to ground your shield of the coax that the transformer is talking, right? That's that's your first thing, right? That's like antenna 101. To, to lower the noise, you have to determine if it's actually RFI from something locally generated. It's not just going to be because you got a shit that, right? If the awning is not causing on a fire. So you'd have to go track that down, right? So you, you need to do a little bit more, but the safety aspect is probably the most important thing is throw something. And would I, would I, in your opinion, ground at the, the onion or if I've got to choke 10 feet down the coax or something? The feet, the feet point of the antenna. Okay. So the coax, you want to go straight down to the ground. Right, I mean, is that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a uh, Steve Ellington, look him up on YouTube. He, he's like the guru of infant half waves, and his, his way of doing it is he doesn't even use the ground radio, but he grounds the antenna. Now, I have experience with that running some power through them, and I was talking to a buddy of mine, and he go, I go, Every once in a while, my, my SWR starts creeping. He says, Do you have any way of grounding it? So I ground into my water pipes, never had a problem again. I don't have a high noise floor anyhow, but and like like Mr. Nice. Say, test it to the uh, <laughs> go to your breakers and just turn off a breaker at a time and see if you find something that's your problem, or something like that. But you can run, also run a ground radio will help probably some too for your for the whole setup. Possibly for space. What's the name again? Steve Ellington. Yes, go ahead. I, I do that with the 705, right? Yeah. The BMC. Oh, the little, uh, who makes it? Arrow yeah. antenna. Yeah. They've got a little uh, so. DFing loop for both VHF or UHF. And you can just walk around like a little magic wand. <laughs> like a theremin. I love using the 705. I don't even put an antenna on it. I sit it next to a power station, like a solar generator that I may be reviewing. And you turn on the AC inverter in that and you watch how, how it affects the waterfall. Some of them are really bad. Some of them are not so bad, but still there. But the 705 is great for doing what you're what you're talking about. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, tiny SA, it's also good. Yeah, yeah, tiny SA works too. Cool. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question about subject matter. Uh, do you ever come across something you think, well, this would make a good video, but 
this guy over here makes more bad, maybe it'd be better for him to do it. Do you ever exchange ideas like that? No, we're really stingy like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm surprised so. you got all of them to sit together. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there's a, there is an era, I think, I think most everybody's gonna agree with this. There is an era of competition between us that's incredibly friendly, but I will say this, there's a, um, I do, I, I attend a lot of uh, how-to YouTube conferences. Uh, there's one in Texas next month after, um, after Labor Day called Vid Summit. It's one of the largest ones in the nation every year. There'll be, there'll probably be 7,500,000 people there. And, um, and I've known, I know people with other YouTube channels in different niches, say overlanding or camping or outdoors or even guns and you know, archery, this kind of thing. And the, I don't think anyone has as tight of a collaboration niche as what we have. Because we, almost all of us have collaborated, collaborated together on something at some point in time. Um, so a lot of the times, yes, we will do that. And, but I mean, we, we, we try to like, you know, the, the, it's very, fr I, I feel like it's very friendly, the, the competition between us, but we collaborate on stuff all the time, and we have people, we, people join my channel, I'll have, I'll have 10 or 15 of these guys on my channel, and I've been on their channels with, with big groups of people before, so, yeah, we can, we, a lot of times, we'll bounce ideas off of each other sometimes, too, so, I feel like this group is very good at doing that. If that case comes up, I'll just find him on my stream and dump it, all his knowledge I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then and then, um, then we both get um, exposure for it. Anybody else? Yeah, I, th I think the other thing, I might not come down here. Okay. I'll, I'll try to be loud. Okay. I think the other thing is we all have different backgrounds. We all have different um, interests, even in a single topic. So Josh is gonna look at something different than I'm gonna look at it. And so I, I think there's enough on just about any topic for likely all of us mm -hmm. to do something and there be some unique value to it. Totally, yeah. Well, in different that. styles of delivery. Yeah. Oh yeah, and perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely true. Next. I'm, I can't. I can't tell who's talking. I'm going to bring something up. Oh, go ahead. The HOA. Is there anybody else that lives in an HOA besides us, Dylan here? All right. Anybody that lives in an HOA? Uh, I came across this on YouTube, and it's. it's uh, I, I thought it was kind of cool. I watched a couple of videos. I want to say his video channel is HOA Ham. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. HOA Ham. So he's a good. He's a good content yeah. creator to you know to watch videos and get ideas if you get from an HOA. Yeah, that's what, uh, and Josh touched on a minute, a minute ago, how deep the hobby is. HOA ham, and that's like a niche inside of the niche. Right. So yeah, exactly. yeah, totally. His, that is a good challenge, right? Thank you. you please silence your radio, sir. I'm working on it. Did you not get the, get the informational message we were working on? Uh, any other questions or comments or anything? Yes, sir. But, uh, we've, I just want to say, I really appreciate what all of y'all are doing. Especially crossing over into the NRS and other stuff, stuff like that, overlanding, kind of blending all that together. Uh, I'm uh, Joe. Uh, we're we're neighbors, but I, we've never met in person. I'm Rip KG5 by MK. Oh yeah, I've heard you a lot. Yeah. Uh, we talk on the repeater all the time. And never made a face. To I'll send you his address. <laughs> <laughs> our, our club is. Uh, I'm with the University of Mississippi Amateur Radio Club. I know. Yeah, we, we had a discussion about that, a really big discussion the other day about how we we need to rebrand our club because that's just so stale and so boring. I mean, nobody wants to, you know, it's, kept, it's weird. It doesn't say anything about what the hobby is. But how are y'all, um, and I'm going to ramble, my wife, the first time I took her, she's from Brazil, the first time I took her through a ham fest, it wasn't five minutes, and she looked around and saw all the gray hair, and she said, this hobby's going to die in like 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. yeah. I've how, never, never what heard What are y'all doing, and how can we as a club brand ourselves to be something that's attractive? And I know we all think this all the time. How can we get more young people in the hobby? I know Steve Goodgame, who mm -hmm. used to be one of our club members mm -hmm. and in our local school, and we licensed 50 new hams in one year. 
you know, because of what he was doing in the schools. And going up to the AWRL and what he does there is really instrumental in, in growing the hobby at the, at the you know, teenage level. What, what do y'all, how, how, what, what, what can we do? I have an answer for that, but I want at least one or two other people to comment as well. I got a, I got a uh, theory. You got a theory. Okay, okay. And, 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 and I can okay, relate it to what you're saying too, and I'll say this. So, you know, like, like you're saying, come to half us, see a lot of gray hair. Yeah. All those gray hairs are not a finite resource. And I'll put it in a context that you can understand. First, I got to say Hale State, but. Wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Hey, that's sports it. ball. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, sports. I'll, I'll kind of put it in a context, uh, and I'll put it in a Greek life context. I, I spent uh, seven years as uh, the chapter advisor, board of governors, chairman for the chapter of my fraternity that's at University of South Carolina. And one of the things that I had noticed from doing that was we were always like, how do we get alumni engagement after these guys graduate? Well, none of them do. They will for the first year or two, but that's because they have lives. They're starting their careers. They're starting their families. They don't have a lot of disposable income. When we see the alumni coming back is when they're in their mid to late 40s because now they're empty nesting. They, their career is established. Now suddenly have this disposable income and disposable time. And I think ham radio is kind of the same way because when you're young, you're doing that same thing. You're starting that family, you're starting that career, you've got all these things, but then one day you wake up and like, I don't have anything to do. Oh, I, I think the key is planting that seed when they're young and then letting them come back to it later. Yep. Some of them will be like me because I started when I was a teenager and, and stayed with it more or less all the way through those years, but others, I hear this story all the time. They'll come in and say, uh, you know what? I started to look at it back years ago when I was 20, 22, something like that. And I never had the time for it. And now I do. So I think that's part of it as well is really, yeah, target the, the youth because we love to have them there. And just plant that seed, but don't get too upset if that seed doesn't sprout for another 20 years. Yeah, well, I will tell you, the week after uh, the club meeting right after the AT&T hours for 24 hours. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. So small. So I have an, I have an answer for that. Uh, I have my own opinion for that. I'll try to be fast. I, I'll let you I'll let you talk, Josh. So sidebar, we were in Yellowstone last month and uh, Rob, myself, Kyle, Frank and a few others were there. And, uh, and um, I have AT&T on my phone. Kyle has T-Mobile and Rob has Verizon. And there was no cell signal at all. But Steve, temporarily offline, was sitting on the back of my truck talking from Wyoming to Pennsylvania on an FT891. So what actually works? You know, it's not your every I, I get a lot of comments all the time. Oh, well, you don't need this anymore because of cell phones. I think the entire state of Wyoming hates cell phone signals, like from everywhere. Because <laughs> yeah. we had all three carriers with this all weekend and we were starving for signal all weekend. So that that's my opinion. So I did, a, I did a video a month and a half or so ago that, uh, that talked about ham radio clubs. One of the most common comments I get is that how someone went to a club and they didn't feel like they were welcomed. Either they felt like the club was cliquish or they felt like they were just in a niche. Oh, if you don't know CW, you're not a real ham, this kind of nonsense, that kind of thing. So I started an initiative about a month and a half ago and I said, I know there are good ham radio clubs out there. Okay, I can, I can list you a dozen ham radio clubs that are excellent clubs in my area, but I don't know about other areas. So, so I started, um, I said, I created a brand new email address called clubs at hamradio2.com and I'm compiling a list that's basically a crowdsourced list. I don't wanna know if your dad's uncle's brother has been in this club. I wanna know if you have been in this club and what you think about it. And if you wanna email me about a bad club, cool. I'm not gonna put it on the list though, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna build a list of clubs that are welcoming, active, want new members, want to reach out, want to be helpful for people who even want to just use APRS and DMR and don't want to learn CW, that's okay, who are just want to get technician license for that day when the, the, the cell sites go down or something. So I want to know, I, I'm trying to do an initiative to build a, a better club. You go on ARRL's website or on QSZ.com and you look up clubs, you can find 10, 15,000 clubs, but there's not much information about what they do or how active they are. So I'm trying to take that next step into building that list. Also, you mentioned Steve Goodgame. Well, real quick here, and then I'm gonna give the mic to Josh. Um, 
We did a cookout at Montesano on, um, and this is because of you guys right here. We get a cookout on Montesano on Friday, and we've done this for the last two or three years. Um, we, we, Kyle, go, I don't know where Kyle is. Anybody, I guess yeah, he slipped he had, into he that. Had to take the dog was sick. Oh, the dog was sick, okay. So he brings his grill and cooks food and everything like that. We cooked 80 hamburgers that day. He takes donations and everything left over is going to um, go to Steve Goodgame's <laughs> Teachers Institute. We sent him several hundred dollars yesterday, and I think that Kyle and I are going to get on a live stream the next week and talk about how much. It was a big number. I'm just going to put it that way. So watch for the live stream because we're going to get Steve Goodgame on and present him with, hey, here's how much money we raised for you. But that's an excellent program, too. If you don't know about Steve Goodgame's Teachers Institute, it's an excellent program. Yeah, friends, guys. Uh, Josh wanted to say something. I'll go yeah. after okay. I got All right. a quick one. Cool. I usually wouldn't speak in the mic, but you can tell my voice is about shot. Uh, <laughs> I am a uh, contact VE and uh, what they call it, CBE for W5YI and ARRLBC. And I've seen something very positive happening lately. Um, college professors and high school teachers, especially like STEM teachers and that kind of thing, they're giving students extra credit for getting their ham radio license. So that is really, really huge. I'll tell you this, in the past year, I've been a part or coordinated at least 500 exams. Uh, and most everybody is under 30 years old that we're testing. So don't lose faith. We're going to keep this hobby alive. There's people coming along. But uh, thanks, Chase. Yeah, you betcha. I, got, I actually have a question for you, Scott. When does your club meet? <coughs> You're, you're talking about your club, right? When does it meet? Tuesday night, six o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Okay. First Tuesday night. Yeah. So Saturday. People with families, right? Kids in school, after curricular or after school stuff is that time, right? So for someone like me, and I guess younger people that are starting their families, they're probably not coming out on a Tuesday night anymore. They're not doing that. Uh, do you ratify the minutes in the beginning of the meeting from last meeting? Mm, yeah. Why? Please <laughs> stop doing that. It, you, you want young people coming in, and you want it to be fun. Nothing is more fun than talking about what we did in the past. Can I get a second? No. Back to the end. Like, do something demonstrative right in the beginning. Talks are great, and we all love PowerPoints, but um, really having something demonstrative. Like, look at Gordo. Right? All of Gordon has Go Gordo has slides, but he's also blowing up a pickle, right? <laughs> so you, you gotta have the, these things. So, I, and, and I'm not, I, I'm not trying to sound you out here, but I think you're in the majority of clubs mm -hmm. that say we want the youth to come out, but we want them to like what we're gonna give them. It, you're not changing it to be for the youth, right? That's the big thing we need to do more of. Is it's not just. We need more youth. It's how do we talk to them in a way that's going to be interesting that will entice them and keep them engaged. And by youth here, I'm talking about, you know, people who are independently has some spending money. The 20s, the 30 year olds, the 40 year olds. Those are those are actually the, the groups we need to have more of. Kids are great, but they actually have a, a lot of attention from the AWRL and the Steve Good Games and all that stuff. They're they're kind of good. We need to educate more of that 20s, 30s year olds areas from my point of view. I'd, I'd like to say something. I'm going to be a little bit more blunt than Josh. I'll just stand up. I was up. pretty blunt. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hold on. My, I'm, I'm, I'm 53 years old and I grew up in the 80s. I'm probably the last generation of people that actually had to learn how to fix things. Your TV broke. You didn't take it. You didn't go to Walmart and get a brand new one or anything like that. You actually had to learn how to fix it or dad fixed it or somebody like that. Old guard, you've got to shut the old guard down. You've got to stop this. You're not a real ham operator if you don't do this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. Younger people today are very focused, they're very targeted, and they don't want to sit there and have to learn a bunch of crap that's irrelevant to them. Most of the, the younger ham operators, the COVID hams, they're very targeted in, you know, they want to do poser, they want to do this. Cater to that. Cater that to get them in there. The ones that will want to learn more will learn more. They will dive into it. Others who are just interested in a topic or two, they'll stay with that. This is the modern day classroom of the youth is, is YouTube and other forms of social media. So 
Start a social media presence. Start a, a YouTube channel. If you've got an account on YouTube, you have a YouTube channel, whether you know it or not. Uh, take advantage and, and bring the knowledge to them in smaller digestible chunks and not worrying about you know, having to know everything under the sun to be a ham radio operator. Uh, it's, it's a hobby. Uh, the thing with Steve Goodgames uh, Teachers Institute is another great thing. My background is electronics. It's not ham radio, but it is a practical application of all of this crap that we learn in school and, and so they can actually see it all and, and put it all together. Uh, and I, I support Steve's program 100% uh, and, and donate directly to that just, just myself. Uh, and, and it's phenomenal to see the growth and uh, what's, what's the guys from uh, Pennsylvania, uh, uh, Drew, the, the principal? Assistant oh, principal. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he started out as a STEM teacher. He's now the assistant principal. And his school, I don't know, what, 40, 50, I 60 a number kids. Of, well, Steve has a number of teachers like that. Yeah, licensed. Yeah. And uh, this past winter, they did an heiress pass. The entire uh, club did it all. There was no adult involvement at all and other than stepping back and just making sure that they uh, uh, had any problems. And those are the kind of things that you know we want to see. But not coming in and, and you got to do it this way or, and whatever. Yes, sir. Uh, our club was one of those where we let, we met on the last Tuesday night and we did the business meeting mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. read the minutes from the you know blah blah blah. So much I brought my grandson to that meeting and his comment, oh, it's boring. Yeah. 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 And then so we started a second Tuesday of the month. We made a second meeting. <laughs> which is a tech only meeting. Okay. It's just topics and presentations and yeah. soldering and whatnot, but we do that on the alternate meetings that we don't do yeah. business meetings. So if, if, if the month. kids show up on the wrong Tuesday. Well, we didn't do that. <laughs> so after, that after my grandson's comment, yeah. we started that for yeah. idea. That's a excellent segue, and I don't disagree with anything that anybody has said about that topic. Mine's a little bit more involved. It involves a little taboo. It's the F word, fun. <laughs> just, just keep having fun, and when people see somebody having fun, they get a little interested uh, in yeah. Maybe I want to have fun too. Excuse so. me, sir. This is ham radio. This is, fun is not allowed. See what I'm talking about? <laughs> so. this is this is dropping your gear bank 14,000 feet is fun. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if, if your club is not doing a hosted Parks on the Air event, I think you're kind of missing out. And well, and the club, that, the main club I'm a part of does it. They have a monthly meeting on on Monday, and they do the minutes thing, blah blah blah. But every Saturday, they're at their clubhouse doing something ham radio. They're like, you want to work on something? You you got a question? You want to learn something? Come up here, and, and we'll we'll do it. So they do that as well. But uh, yeah, we got a lot of questions here. We're gonna get to everybody. So go ahead. I just want to make a comment. Um, a truth I heard here at this convention. I was talking at, to uh, Roland over on the Long Island CW Club uh, booth over there, mm -hmm. and they have 168 classes going on right now, mm -hmm. and four or five of those are youth only. Mm -hmm. nice. So my question to him was, well, how did you you know, get the, the young people to come into these classes to want to do that. Mm -hmm. And his answer was uh, a revelation to me. He said, moms. Really? He actually said, tiger moms. <laughs> <laughs> the, the moms that want their Easy kids part. to excel, to do well. Apparently, one on CW Club shows up at fairs or public grant gatherings or whatnot, and it shows Morse code. And if the kids show interest, the moms say, okay, we're gonna follow up with this and go on with that. So just plant a seed there. If there's some way that you can, um, as Josh said, um, act, activate the families, then uh, that might be a good thing for the, for the hobby. And finally, I got started teaching ham radio classes for preppers in South Carolina. I know a couple so, of people so do that. So if there's preppers in yeah. your area, they probably need you for communication yep. skills. Agreed. Agreed. This, this, yes, yes, sir, right there. One, uh, uh, one thing that people might consider doing is like what one of my clubs that I'm in did. When uh, about 10 years ago, when uh, they started the big push on STEM in schools, they approached the school and the junior high and worked uh, 
amateur radio and electronics as you're part of the STEM program. So the first year, I think they had like five kids that got their license. But then as it went along, more and more people, more and more <coughs> kids started getting their license. It got big enough now that you could walk into the junior high, get the kids walking around with HTs <coughs> and using them. Wow. They put their own repeater in the junior <coughs> high. Nice. Even better. Some of these kids now, they've gone through high school, they're married, they're having kids. Some of their kids are now getting interested in amateur radio. I, well, <laughs> can I do that? Yeah, this could yeah. work hold, hold. at other schools. I, I got some questions for you. Turn the mic back on. Yeah. I have some questions for you. Uh, was there a teacher that was the spearhead? Yes. Was there a club on campus? No, there was not a club on campus, but okay. uh, they had uh, been talking about trying to get one. Okay. Now, there were a group of the kids that were kind of a club. Yeah. Okay, so the, the key thing I think there is that there was a teacher that was the spearhead, right? So if you yeah. talk to Steve and some of the other folks, sorry, say again? He was very instrumental in getting right. the electronics and amateur radio into the STEM program. Right, and so if, you, if you've if you heard from Steve Goodgame and, and the teachers he's worked with, there has to be that teacher. A ham club it doesn't... Please don't, by the way. Just roll up to a school and go, hey guys, I've got the ham radios, let's do this. <laughs> you, 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 need, you need to have a, a, an entry point, and, and that teacher sounds like the one. So the clubs can't usually just go into school. It doesn't work that way. Um, that's why Steve Goodgame and the other things like that exist. Uh, so if you, if you do know a teacher and they are interested in amateur radio, that's why that whole Teachers Institute exists. That's what, that, that's what they're trying to do, is to create those people that can carry it forward. This program has been going for 10 years now, and it's still going. I, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with, the, with the, the work they're doing. I'm saying to make that happen, you need to have that, that primary advocate, right? The champion of, the, of at least getting the ball off the ground, so yeah. Where is that happening? Uh, Northeast Texas. What? Oh, a little bitty, well, I say fairly little place, uh, Atlanta, Texas. Atlanta, Texas. Yes. I know exactly where that is. Okay. Uh, if you want to quiz me about Texas towns, you can, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna turn out well. Someone back here, you have a question. Someone, does someone else back here have a question also earlier? Okay, go ahead, sir. My question from the business end of the teachers. I know nothing how you do. I know you have sponsors. And yeah. Things. Shifting and gears. <laughs> wow. 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 This is in California, man. Come on. Yeah, go ahead. So, does it pay? I'm sorry? Does it make money for you? I mean, yes. You, are you able to afford this? Yes, it makes money. It like Good it question. question. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm not IRS. Uh, I, yes. I don't make a dime, yeah, but right. my community is worth a million dollars. Right. Right. I don't make a dime, not one dime, and I, I don't care about that. But the people I meet make it worth a million dollars. Yeah, but yes, there, 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 there is a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I understand what you. I understand where you come from, yeah. though. Um, yes, it is possible to make money on YouTube. It's done with multiple streams of income. You can't. YouTube pays you some for ads that are on the video. So a few years ago, maybe four or five years ago, you used to be able to have a YouTube channel and turn ads off and just not run any ads at all. Well, YouTube kind of got wise to the idea and they're like, okay, well, you don't have to turn ads on, but we're gonna do it. This is all website. We're gonna keep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna do, we're gonna run the ads and we're gonna keep the money. Or we'll give 60%, because YouTube gives you 60% of their ad revenue. There were two or three other video platforms that came around roughly about the same time as YouTube, and the reason YouTube is successful is because they shared 60% of the ad revenue with their creators, and that's why they're as big as they are today, and Google bought them in 20, 2008 or whenever it was. So, yes, you can make money on YouTube, and yes, you, you see ads on YouTube which are there no matter what the creator does, and the creator can choose to take part of them or not. But there's a bunch of other ways to do it as well. Affiliate links are a really good part, like clicking on an Amazon affiliate link or something like that is a really good part. And here's the thing I'll say about that. There are a lot of ham radio companies now 
that have bought into this affiliate program idea and are now sharing affiliate links with people like us so that if we sell a product for them, we get a small commission, but it, it gets them more sales. Affiliate links are like a unpaid salesperson. Like it's straight commission, unpaid. If I do nothing this month, you give me nothing this month. If I sell you $100,000 worth of stuff this month, then I make a commission, that kind of thing. So a lot of companies are starting to realize that now. And that's that's one of the ways that it's done. But there's, there's, there's multiple ways to do it. So yes, it does pay money. And I say that on my channel a lot. I like, this is my main source of income. Here's what I'm doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If I was only in it for the money, believe me, I would not do a ham radio channel. <laughs> because nothing against ham radio, just people don't know what it is. And this is right. what we're talking about, getting people interested in ham radio. This is what we've been talking about for the last half hour. Nobody knows. If I if all I want to do is make money on YouTube, I'd go start a channel about Android phones or motorcycles or something. But people, but I, I do this because I, I like ham radio. I have a couple other channels now myself, but my main channel is ham radio because this, that's where my focus is. But yes, you can totally make money. Here's a question I hear all the time. So I use YouTube premium. I don't watch the commercials. Do you get part of that? Yeah, like 0. 0.0002 cents per view, something like that. So yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go buy a hamburger with it later. <laughs> not here. Not, not here. You're not here. Yeah. Yeah. Are any of you uh, posting on any other platforms but YouTube? I post on Rumble, Odyssey, and I think that's all right now. Okay. Yeah. Is, they, is their, their payback schedule higher? Or? No. We make zero dollars by doing that. No. You're just I, protecting your they all just, yeah, I mean. There's, there's some people that are of the mindset, I don't want to watch YouTube because I don't like what Google stands for. Okay, cool. Um, it's, and they want to watch Rumble videos. And, oh, okay, that's fine. And I want, people to watch, I want people to watch my videos about ham radio, so I put them over there. When Callum lost his channel, Callum, DX Commander, everybody knows who Callum is? He lost his channel for some, he didn't know why reason. He had 70, 70 80,000 subscribers. He woke up one morning, his channel was gone. All his videos were gone, just gone. Google account specifically his, yeah. was, was like yeah his Google broke, account was gone, which takes it all out. Right, and I think he found out later why it was, but it was some kind of mistake or something. But he never really got it back. Right. But all of his videos were when he would upload a new video to YouTube, it would automatically put it on Odyssey as well. So he had all of that backed up on another website that you could go and reference if you were wanting to watch a uh, a video about his one of his antenna builds or something. So that's another way to do it. It's not, it's not putting all your eggs in one basket. That's why I do it. But yeah, th there's, no, there's no money at all in those. I think I can go into my Odyssey account that, I've had, that I have several hundred videos on. It's been up for three or four years, and it says your total revenue is like 24 cents. So, Ouch. yeah. yeah. Almost, a gumball. <laughs> yeah. Almost. Almost a gumball. Almost a gumball. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Jason and Josh, along the same lines, you both have great podcast. I spent a lot of time in the car and can't watch YouTube. It's kind of dangerous driving. You know? But you can do it though. Does that help you hurt you or how do you how do you guys take I do have podcast? My podcasts are a little different. Yeah. So my my podcast is yeah. nothing more than an audio rip of my videos. Where Josh and Leigh are doing the Right. Work. And I, I the only reason I did that is because like five or six years ago someone said the same thing you just said. They say I drive. I drive for a living, yeah. I like your videos, but I can't watch them, can you rip them in audio? And I'm like, all right, like three people are gonna listen to these, okay, fine. But actually, I've had some very good results about ripping the audio, but I don't have an actual podcast yeah. other than just yeah. that, but Josh does. Yeah, uh, traditional podcast, we sit down in front of microphones and record it, right? We've got a show thing that we go through, it takes a couple of hours to record it, and then I upload it to a podcasting, uh, we use Podbean. How do you get four hours worth of podcast in two hours? Uh, you play it faster. Uh, yeah, where's, where's Sterling? Sterling's the like, champion of the 2X group. Uh, and that's just a traditional podcast. And then get, that gets distributed to all the other podcast listing areas. So Spotify, Apple, all that stuff. Um, which, that, that's fun. That, that's uh, the other uh, area that we post to in Instagram. Right? You, you got Instagram, Twitter, oh, sorry, X. Yeah, those some of the other Twix. ones. Twix. 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 I call it Twix. Twix? Oh, Twitter X. Do the podcast Okay, so they do. Huh. The Podbean will insert ads, like in the beginning. I think they'll find a mid spot and maybe one at the end. Those are really low performing, like barely covers the cost of the monthly charge for the podcast service. So you podcasts are the old school way where you got to pay for the service fee. Um, 
But we will occasionally get proper sponsors like Alpha Antenna, right? They, they would pay for a spot that we'd read and we'd talk about some of the stuff, some of the stuff I'd used and Leia would you know, do Leia's thing on the show. Um, but yeah, the, the more traditional, like podcast is more like old media, like radio, like actual radio type stuff, which is kind of interesting. I'll take that one too. Um, I, I do an audio podcast. I release an audio podcast uh, once a week. And um, two of the audio podcasts aren't on YouTube. So they're only over there. And there's only a small subset of people that listen. But I do enjoy doing it. Um, it's another time for me, Jason, and Mike get together and we just usually smoke a cigar wherever we're at and um, just talk about what's going on amateur radio. Um, but it's. It, it's fun, and the answer to the monetization question, yeah, I just get enough to pay for the service. <laughs> I just want to get with these guys more and smoke a cigar. <laughs> that, that's the reason. It's a good reason. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. I, I'm noticing kind of a trend of like the TikTokers in a sense that the attention span of younger people and not necessarily just younger, but just in general has really shrunk. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that could be a good hook to produce more shorter videos? And then, you know, come to my website or my YouTube goes. channel mm -hmm. or something to get younger people in. Mo yes, oh, yes. Shorts. Most of us are doing that. Most of us have shorts videos on our YouTube channel. We might have TikTok or Instagram reels or Facebook reels or something like that. I dabbled it in it. I, I still do it. I don't do it consistently, but I still do it. Yeah, but yes, that is that is a good way. I can't count the number of times I've gone to sleep laughing myself to sleep at night watching TikTok videos. My wife will go, stop it. Yeah. I, I, but I yeah, say. yeah. So, but yes, to answer your question, yes. Go ahead, Tim. Show hands. Has anybody heard the term "poda royalty"? Anybody heard that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That came from a video that I did. I made it into a short. That's got almost two million views on it. <laughs> and and uh, is made Dan famous, uh, more famous, like more famous than Danny is now. But but that's the point. It it will get picked up, and because of that, I have drawn a lot of viewers to my different social media platforms because of just that one short. So yeah, it, it does do that. Yep, totally. Yes. AI does not, yeah, AI doesn't generate affiliate links. Uh, those are specific links, but. You can, you can use AI to, to go through an episode and ask it to generate. Yeah, yeah, you could, yeah, you could do that. I've tried that once or twice. It's okay. Um, I see a lot of potential for that, but I haven't really used it much myself. It's, it's easier than I thought it would be. I don't know yeah. I've heard that in California. To do what? Oh, the podcast. Get, yeah. Well, it's podcast or video, video or whatever. Video. And so I, I take that, the TRT file, and have to read it in the TXT file and say, please generate a summary of the concept. So it comes back. You have to divide it in a couple of parts. And it comes back, and if it looks good, I say, okay, if it's not, you know, this is too much of a narrative. And so go through a couple of iterations, and it seems to get smarter with, with each one of them. And after that, I ask it to generate the HTML so the guys can load on their website. Start to finish, how much time does this take you? It, it, one episode. One episode, and their episodes go for about an hour and a half. It takes maybe even 40 minutes. But no, your time. My time, 40 minutes. Wow. Okay. And, yeah, and some of that's waiting for the AI to do AI yeah, things? Yeah. It, the first one was probably an hour and a half as I was getting the hang of it, what to ask it, what not to ask it. And that's simply to add links to a podcast. To, 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 do, um, to do a summary of the show. To, do a to go into the podcast or video. Video or to upload it to their, to their website if they want to. Like a, sure, like a blog. Make a blog post to, out to of it? make a blog yeah. post. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do a 50 word summary, ask it for my keywords, um, ask it to do something that will entice the listener and, and optimize all the Okay, interesting. And then I ask it to go through and um, 
generate at least 10 Amazon links to give it links that they can use and then put that into each hmm. hmm. Interesting. I'll have to look into it more, but as of now, I don't have any more time to <laughs> do AI stuff. You find a volunteer that wants to do it. I yeah. <laughs> I'd be interested in hearing about more about that myself. Preston, what's up? Yeah, well, this, this is specifically for Josh. What kind of stimulants do you recommend to work with 9 to 5, do podcast and videos? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Who's your uh, and have a family. That's California. We'll work for you. You're a manager. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, um, let's see. Lots of coffee. I do, I do usually ask people, it's like, do you watch television? Have you seen the latest movie? Do you do something outside of radio and YouTube? And if they go, yeah, well, I don't. <laughs> uh, I, I think that's part of it. Um, I, I realize also um, that people, they, they ask that question a lot, and I'm, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know that that's that weird. But I'm not seeing you on Discord on the weekends at like 3 in the morning. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know how to answer that question. It's just kind of how I am. I guess I don't sleep enough. They'll definitely say that's true. So, so just to touch on that, um, you know, between creating videos, editing, editing videos, and where most of my videos are photo, and I'm probably the most active photo person in the world. <laughs> photo person. Uh, photo person, correct. Between all that, uh, I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> you, you know, two hours is a good night for me. Oh no, not me. Okay. <laughs> 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 but I had three hours. <laughs> Next, anybody? Jason, yeah, what's up? I got one. Okay. And, and this this one, Josh, you and Mike will probably want to take stabs at. Where do you guys come up with the crazy thumbnails? <laughs> You know, after you've done 1,600 videos mm -hmm. and you've looked to see what does and doesn't work, you kind of learn a few things. So that's what, I mean. <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's one thing, yeah. The YouTube face is a very real thing. I mean, people say, oh, what's with the goofy face? Well, because you clicked on it, didn't you? <laughs> so, I mean, it's a very real thing. I mean, like, like you go to YouTube conferences and they talk about the YouTube face and thumbnails and that's, that's, that's a thing. So what you have to do is you have to create a thumbnail and a title that draws people's attention in, in an honest fashion, not in a clickbait fashion. Josh and I were laughing about this yesterday, but in an honest fashion, like to, you have to, it's basically called stop the scroll. People are scrolling through their phones and they see something, they're like, whoa, what is that? And that's what you, and then they click on your video and then hopefully your video is worth watching. Because if your video sucks, then they're going to click on it and say, this is no good, and leave real quick. But it's a very real thing to have a title and a thumbnail that are that will stop the scroll and catch people's attention. So, And that's just, to me, my personal opinion, that's just advertising ham radio to people. Because if they're going to stop and click on my video, they're going to hear about ham radio. Yeah. And that's one, one way to do it. Okay. No, that's it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is the quietest I've ever heard Mike be, so, uh, yes sir. So I have a question for Mike, uh, there you go. Yeah, the place. first off I want to say I really enjoy your Mailbag Monday videos, because I'm new, a lot of times the questions that are being asked are questions that I have, so those are good. So the sure. first question is, is how many uh, emails do you go through a week to come up with the two, three, or four that you actually answer? And secondly, as a retired insurance professional, how's your roof holding up? Because you walk on it a lot. <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually not up there that much. I don't have health insurance, so I try to stay off of it. Uh, I do need to go up there because I have a new comment antenna that I got a date and I still haven't put it up. Um, how many emails do I go through? Uh, that depends on any given day. Right now, I have 782 unread emails. Um, most of those are just like Google comments, they're YouTube comments because they'll, they'll email you. But I mean, it's usually, I don't know, five, 10 uh, questions that I'll go through. I'm horrible at looking at emails, I hate it. Um, 
Everybody, everybody asks me like to do WinLink and stuff. I'm like, I don't check my emails at home. Why would I want to do that when I'm out buying drink? Um, but I have a folder on my on my desktop, um, and when a good question comes across, um, I'll just I'll just screen grab it and, and put it in there. And um, some you know, there's there's a lot of questions that I get that I've kind of already answered, or or have answered a very similar question. So a lot of times I'll just email that individual back with like a link to that. Uh, uh, video talking about the subject, but uh, in there, I haven't I haven't looked at my emails in like two weeks because I've been on the road. Um, but I think I've probably got. Well, we answered two on our ride up to Iowa. I think there was I think there was like six or seven questions in there, so I probably have more. So it, it's kind of nice having a, a a pool of questions to to go through, but. Um, sometimes I don't know the answer. <laughs> a lot of times I don't know the answer. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning more every day. Uh, you, you will never learn it all in this hobby. That is the one thing that I have learned. Um, well, I've learned other things, but that's, that's one thing. Um, so, how's that for an answer? Preston, yes. Yes, Mr. Preston. What do you guys use for audio and video editing, and is any of it free? Would yeah, we talked about that early, but I think most of us are using DJI wireless mics uh, just, just what, what, and DaVinci Resolve. Yeah. yeah, most of these guys use DaVinci Resolve, the free version. I use the paid version. Yeah. <laughs> Mike rolls like that. Yeah. Yeah, you get a lot more features, man. They're very, very uh, good at doing what they do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. Damn it. <laughs> that's, that's why I showed up late. <laughs> Second to the mailbag Mondays. I'm, I'm a ham, extra class, licensed back in the 1990s before some people were born for sure. And I still learn things from your mailbag Mondays today. Yep. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. That's, that's huge. And a little bit towards Josh and Mike. Oh. Um, is it because we slept together last night? Yeah, please clarify that, Mike. The power of influence is both of you with your YouTube um, have convinced me. I bought a Mac on 7610. Nice. Thank you both for that. Um, I've learned a lot about that radio uh, specifically because of the work you two have done. Um, I don't think I'm going to be following Josh as he pursues down this place. Right? I was just going to say, boom, You say that I'm now. Interested in, I'm interested in watching and learning, open mind. Um, and Mike, this is probably the most important question you'll get today. Uh-oh. Have you finalized the conversations with Huntsville State Park to have your call sign emblazoned on the pavilion that you always activate. <laughs> <laughs> the KAMRD Memorial Pavilion. Well, <laughs> Memorial. Memorial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're dead to him and it might. I don't know what pavilion you're talking about because there is no pavilion in Huntsville State Park, but uh, uh, the picnic bench, uh, AKA the KAMRD Proving Grounds. So in Detroit, the car companies have proving grounds where they test all the prototype cars and things. Yeah. That's where I got that, but but yeah, it would be cool to have my calls. Maybe I should just get up my knife and just engrave it one. Uh, yeah, that's that's a good idea. I, literally, everybody knows me there. Uh, all the all the rangers and all the people at the front uh, the front gate and everything, and we usually chit chat uh, when I'm when I'm going in. So yeah, they they uh, they know me. They leave me alone, or they come over and say hi. But uh, yeah. On that note, how do you guys? Keep somebody from rolling up to your house. I use a PO box. <laughs> lots and lots of guns. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be a thing. The more popular you get with Onyx and everything. I have the PO box. I've had people show us in my house. Um, to, in a live stream. During a live stream. Yeah, oh, that is yeah. creepy. Yeah. No. Pizza delivered. Um, I had one guy kind of pretend like he didn't know I lived there. And wow. Caught oh. me in the front yard and started talking to me. He goes. Oh, you're like a ham radio guy, huh? And then he knew that I was one. It was he knew a lot for just being in the area, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird. Um, Leia gets some weird messages occasionally from the the podcast and stuff that don't make it onto the air. <laughs> People can be weird. I mean, even in our hobby, but. Um, 
Yeah, we're, we're well yeah. armed. Uh, what are you yeah. 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 Anybody yeah. gotten swatted? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes, no, Tom no. Medlin did. Really? Yeah, Got years ago, swatted. Tom Medlin was swatted. Um, they said that some guy named Tom is taking a knife to Katie. Katie was the other one that was on the show, right? And they're not in the same physical location, but they swatted uh, Tom Medlin's home saying that he was murdering Katie with a knife. And, and yeah, the, the actual SWAT team came in when they were when they were on the air. This is like four years ago. This, this is like, Wow. Back oh, anybody to swat Tom? Yeah, I know, of all the people. Yeah. Um, but now, because, not just because of Tom, but because of swatting in general, that is a, like, I believe that is an actual felony. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So they're not playing around with that anymore. Uh, people are, I, I don't, I've not heard much, many swatting cases recently, because I think people are kind of getting the message that could go real bad. I just wanted to pepper in there when we were talking about POTA. Um, Vern Six asked me to announce that um, the pavilions next year will still have Friday, but he's going to cancel the Saturday pavilion yeah. since it wasn't uh, really utilized this, this go around. But uh, we still have the Friday, the Friday pavilion, the Friday hangouts are amazing. And uh, who tried my beans? Give it your beans. Yeah. yeah. And who liked them? Should I do it again? Yes. yes. All right. I'm going to bring a scorpion next time. <laughs> bring EMS with you. All right. That's all. You keep wrapping this around you. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Yes. to it and some of it we get interested enough to pursue it so thank you for doing this and don't stop <laughs> thank you thank you never you, stop yeah stop. you guys thank you. it's all y'all who make it possible honestly because if no one watched it you'd probably get tired of it pretty quick so we we want to thank you guys too for for watching supporting yeah. i can't count the number of times that uh at, at at this hand fest this weekend but I, i'm talking about in general overall that people have come up to me and said hey i really enjoyed your show i got licensed i got my upgrade because of your channel and that that really is what means the most to me out of, out of everything so i appreciate you guys everything that y'all said to me as well we appreciate y'all yeah good okay so here we're, we've got another half hour but we might kind of hang out and talk with everybody but i i thought of a question a minute ago and i want to know who is i want to know who the person in the room is that's been licensed the longest so as i i continuously or personally uh totally totally not continuously i mean if you had a big lapse then you're probably going to lose points but yeah uh, uh just total total number of years licensed i renewed my license for the third time this year so i've been licensed for 30 years so i'm sure that there's somebody in the room that's licensed longer than me i was licensed in 77 77. Ding, ding, ding. I was licensed in 63. 63. Someone before 63? Yes, sir. 73. 73. Someone before 63. Ron? Everybody, everybody yeah. have a <laughs> Ron's a great supporter. He's at all of our events. He's a great guy. And by the way, you guys are great, and I've said it before, and you all know it, but you really took over the role of the of the Elmers in this, yeah. you know, in, in what we're doing nowadays. So it's important, and I, I really thank you all. It's, it's really great. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to tell Ron he's old. Solicit, like, and subscribe. Oh, yeah. Well, here I can. Um, and please like and subscribe. Yeah, the please like and subscribe to all these people. Uh, I don't know if anybody in here made a QSL with me on Friday. Uh, if you did, I have QSL cards. That, you know, before you leave, if you want your QSL card, I'll get you to get it to you today. Okay. One last question right here. Yeah, the uh, I talked to. Uh, I sent an email to uh, Leah for him ready to crash course. I had uh, the opportunity to get a, a twelve seventeen beam 
and I've got a tri-bander, and I've got another team on it. And uh, I said, well, what do you think? And Josh is like, well, I'm really not sure, but I'll bump it up. So, so he talks to K3LR on uh, Henry O Crash Course, and uh, the guy's like, you know, that, that's probably not a good idea because there's not enough separation. You're probably going to wind up detuning the entire thing. You're going to make yourself, you're going to harm yourself way more than you're going to help yourself. So I, I declined the, the beam. And basically, I didn't know. And I thought, well, I haven't been at this, I've been at this 14 years, but I'm not a, an expert in antennas and stuff. So I thought I'd ask an Elmer, and Josh became the Elmer. And then well, I, I went to the Elmer. But it K3 LR is going to be the Elmer in, in a lot of cases. Yeah. But I uh, saved myself from probably ruining my whole ham radio experience because none of the antennas would have really worked as well. No. And would have. We'll come back to that. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Sorry. But it, 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 it goes to show you, I listen to these things a lot of times. I do IT. And uh, I get some time where it's like there's the the uh, white knuckle terror moments where you don't have anything playing in your office at all, and you hope your door's closed and nobody can hear what's going on. And then there's the times where you're just doing the road activities, and a lot of times that helps pass the time. And in the meantime, I'm learning a lot about hammering. I picked up so much stuff just by little comments, just little little snippets of comments. Like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. I need to look at that a little bit more. Uh, the, the ham radio 2.0 is really good for like new products, mm -hmm. uh, different types of products, just so you kind of know what's out there because I don't have an unlimited budget. I'm not gonna buy a lot of new stuff, but it's nice to know what's out there so that if somebody else approaches me mm -hmm. who has that, that I can at least speak the language, so to speak. You know, I don't just say, oh, I don't know what that is, it looks stupid. I can actually kind of halfway understand what they're talking about. So that's, <laughs> that to me seems like, Reiterating his uh, Elmer thing, it saved me from making a mistake, and it's helped me to learn a lot about a lot of products that I probably uh, will never buy, but I will run into hands in my ham experience that have used those things, and I can at least speak to them about it. So, good, good, thank you, appreciate that. Okay, well, we uh, we have the room for another 20 minutes, so you guys feel free to hang out, and we'll just uh, talk one-on-one. -on -one. But again, thank you very much uh, for coming today. Does anyone else up here on the front have anything to say? No? Thank you for everything. Yeah, yeah. That, thanks, thanks for everything. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Did I get you?